Using external tools with Metasploit, this time on Metasploit Minute. Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from this show and can spare even a dollar an episode, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today, we're going to be going over using external tools through Metasploit. Now, the very first thing you have to have is uh, a Metasploit shell to push things through. So we're actually going to start up Metasploit just as we would. And in this example, we're going to actually be using one of the coolest new exploits that just hit the fan about October time frame. Probably have that wrong, but it's MS14068. So we're going to wait till Metasploit starts up. We have, there we go, we got the cow, so we know we're good. We're gonna use exploit multi script, uh, yeah, script web develop uh, delivery. So, what this does is it actually has a way via the web to deliver a Metasploit uh, payload. So, what we're gonna do is set up our, your, our surf path is fine, we're gonna say target. So by default, this particular module has a Python target. And we can say that there's target 0, 1, 2 just by hitting tab, or do show targets so that we can see what targets we are. Since this is a Windows install and PowerShell is, is the default um, scripting language there, we're going to set our target to 2. And we've got to change our payload to Windows, Meterpreter, Reverse, TCP. Now we should be good to go. Our serve host is fine. We're going to keep the serve port 8080 just because it's going to be going over us uh, via the web. Um, our URI path, we're good with it being random because we don't want um, just the random person to go up on our site and, uh, and see our payload just sitting there. And we're going to just set our L host and our L port. So we're going to say, you know, 2112, just for example. No, no big deal there. So this is our setup already done, and type exploit with an E. So, what I recommend when you run this, pay, uh, when the run this module is that you actually keep and copy this portion, the PowerShell portion, the script that needs to be run on the system. So we're going to start up a, just a little leaf pad so that we can copy and paste that. You can see that it goes to our website over 8080 and downloads this string from this long URL, or random URL. So we're going to go over here, we're going to paste it in, goes away, and we should be getting interpreter session one. Now that we have interpreter session one, and you can see sessions, sessions, it's there. Now what we can do is we can put, we're using a route, and we've talked about routes before, we can throw all we want through all the modules through that interpreter session. So if we were inside of another network, um, we could have it pivot from the initial host that we've exploited through that to other hosts um, using the route command. So use, uh, we're going to route add 172.16.102.0.255.255.254. Too many fives. Zero, route it through one. We've set up a route now. Any module we want inside of Metasploit will go through that uh, through the that interpreter session. However, there's this awesome tool, and I think we've touched on this a little bit before, is the auxiliary server SOX proxy. So the SOX proxy actually imitates a real SOX proxy and pulls in traffic inside of Metasploit. So once it's inside of Metasploit, it conforms to all the routing rules that um, Metasploit has set up. So we're going to set our serve host, just because we like to keep our SOX proxies to ourselves, as 1080 and on 127.001. All right, so we've got the SOX proxy set up. Now, we can use any tool outside of Metasploit that, you, that, that can support a SOX 4A proxy. So if I s went over to burp, Burp Suite, and I wanted to browse internal websites um, through this uh, uh, through this interpreter session. I could then set up in here 
use SOX proxy, and then just change it to um, 1080, and hit go. Now, everything I use in Burp will actually go through this, this tool. Um, the thing is with Burp, though, it doesn't support SOX 5, so you actually have to use something like um, Privoxy or, or uh, Polipo to get it to go through there. Um, an HTTP proxy that will then forward it on through the SOX proxy. So something that will support SOX 4A is, is proxy chains. So um, we're going to configure proxy chains. And proxy chains is basically something that will um, automatically proxify any application, um, as long as it uses TCP. So Tor is a great uh, um, example, and that's what it comes default with. So we're going to just uh, nano proxy chains. Skip down to the bottom, change this to 1080. And now we have our proxy chains ability. So what we're going to do with this is actually use another thing called Impacket. It's a library by Core Security. So we've already pulled this down from Google Code, and you can find it on Google Code um, very easily. It's Impacket. So we go into Impacket once we have Impacket installed. Since it's a library, you just Python setup install. Python setup install. That's it. And we already have this done, so we don't have to worry about anything in there. And it actually has a bunch of examples. And we could go ad nauseum in these examples, but one of the biggest, coolest recent ones was the MS14068 example, which is called Golden Pack. And we could go uh, forever on what and how this exploit works, but we're just going to start off real easy to show you something kind of cool. So Python, we see that this Golden Pack takes a, a couple arguments, a target, a uh, username and password, or a username and hash, which is great. This is one tool that exploits the MS14068 without having to have a, st a straight up password. So let's proxy change that over to our domain controller. So this exploit exploits a domain controller. It's in particular the Kerberos um, listener, the Kerberos uh, KDC. Um, and it modifies this pack thing. And we could go over that in another episode um, to make it so that any user, any user on a domain can be domain admin just because of this exploit, just because of some Kerberos uh, funny business. So they've made this into a proof of concept, and we're going to proxy change it in. So golden pack, and then we tell it a domain, so exploits.local, and our dom and uh, user is our user, and we've already got his password. We saw that PowerShell pop up in the last episode. We're going to put his password in, and we are going to say at dc1.exploits dot local. And it did a DNS request. Hold on. So it's doing this DNS request and for some reason principal name unknown. Why? Ah. It's exploit, not exploits.local. So exploit.local um, with the domain. We set it again. And did I mess it up again? Let's see. Yes, I did. Exploits.local. Exploits.local. All right. Now that it's actually working correctly, um, and because I had the exploit versus exploits local I issue, um, you can see that this exploit was pivoted over over our interpreter session. You can see all this S chain or proxy chains going on with port 88 for Kerberos and port 445 for, for SMB. It requested the shares. It hit the shares. Open the SVC manager, more uh, 445 traffic, and now I have a shell, a full interactive shell, um, not quite interactive, but it's, it is more interactive than normal CMD, on the domain controller. And who am I? Who am I? We are system. We've essentially pivoted the entire connection that we have going to this domain controller through that one interpreter session and exploited the latest MS14068. So what do you think? Email us at msf at hack5.org and stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. And huge thanks to 
everyone who's supported the show directly. You can find ways to donate or get awesome Metasploit Minute merchandise at metasploitminute.com. Every dollar goes to making this show and other shows just for you. For that, I am deeply grateful. So until next time, I'm Mubix, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. Hey there, yeah, you. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate all the awesome feedback and support we've received from viewers exactly like you. Well, not as cool, but you know, you get the gist. If you haven't already checked it out, you could really help if you go over to the, our Patreon and support the show directly. If you can't, that's cool. A simple like or subscribe goes a long way too. Either way, thanks for watching, and we'll talk later, man. Take it easy.